All right, got a service call in downtown. Yeah, I'm right out front. Hey, sweet, see you in a minute. Train, water source, heat pump. Dirty filter. Could probably use a cleaning. It's not the best access. Yeah, I don't have power. The AC is right here. It says microwave. Nine and 11 should be AC. And we got two single. I'm gonna open this thing up. All right. Everything actually looks very clean. Doesn't look like it's been messed with. Still weird that it's labeled weird. Yeah, there's no power. The tenant moved out on Friday. Turned the power off. It's Monday right now. <laughs> so yeah, check the lights. <laughs> it is uh, 5.45 p.m. We do have our gauges hooked up. And our pressures are, okay, we're taking our water temp split. Usually like 10 to 12 degrees is good. These are our pressures and cooling. It's not horrible. Um, this is a escrow thing. I guess it wasn't working during the home inspection. Oh yeah, look at that. Water temp split. 62 to 99. I don't know if that's accurate. That's gonna probably be due to poor flow. I'm gonna get my hand on this pipe. Yeah, it, it, you probably just have a dirty strainer. I never trust my pipe clamps. I've got a 35 degree split. You should feel a 35 degree difference when you put your hand on the thing. You could do a whole diagnosis off of a pipe clamp that's not quite reading right. And they can read pretty far off. I was really skeptical if it had that reading because the pressures actually look good. Sorry for my poor lighting. This is our water line coming in. I don't know if you can see it, but that's our strainer. I want to take a quick pause here to explain how these systems work. A lot of people that watch my videos probably already know how they work. I would just skip ahead because I'm just going to explain it at the most basic level. You have a high-rise building with a limited amount of roof space, but 250 condos inside. You're not going to be able to fit 250 units on the roof. The solution is they have one central outdoor unit for the whole building. And what that outdoor unit does is it pumps water through the building. It uses these water lines to remove, if you're running it in cooling, it removes the heat from the building. And if you're running it in heat, it removes the cool from the building. The water that goes through those lines isn't always super clean. So what can happen is you've got this cooling coil into which there are refrigerant lines and water lines that go. And that's how the heat is pulled pulled out or the cold is pulled out of the unit. Now if that water flowing through is dirty, it will eventually dunk up that coil. So the solution to that is to filter the water with a strainer. Oftentimes those strainers never get clean because people just don't do maintenance on their systems or the HVAC guys that come out don't offer to clean them or the homeowners don't want to get them cleaned. We see these get dirty a lot and then it affects the efficiency of your unit a lot pretty drastically. Usually you don't need to clean them, but every 10 years or so, unless you have really dirty water going through. But the one on this unit, based on apparent lack of maintenance we're seeing, it probably hasn't even been checked. When it comes out there, it goes that way. Most likely we have one of two issues, either A, just have a dirty strainer or B gunked up water coil we'd like to start cleaning the strainer I don't, I don't know how you're supposed to access that thing this isn't really a user-friendly attic space that's the neighbor's unit actually I think we have to clean it from the neighbors they blocked the strainer with a water line so I don't know what the correct protocol is for all this probably talk to the neighbor and tell them we need to get access in their unit I want to show you guys I use low loss fittings that that's screwed on nothing screwed off that's off so I, that was the high side I mean it's only about 200 psi this is the low side nothing absolutely nothing I get to choose where I kind of bent that little bit of refrigerant and it's not right in my face Pretty standard stuff in here. Someone replaced this and didn't support it. Well done, whoever did that. These older systems, I mean, this is what they had instead of having a board. If you're gonna work on old equipment, you gotta get used to being able to kind of decipher what's going on. It's a bit of a dying art form. Most guys just are used to looking at a board, reading the code. I do like diagnosing. I have a trouble turning away work when it's a broken system. It's 7 p.m. right now. I like diagnosing things. I like tearing things apart, so. Here I am. Let's just look at this wiring diagram. What are we doing? Just looking at all this stuff. I mean, it looks like fucking Greek sometimes. Be my go-to when I'm trying to just kind of familiarize myself with the system is I get eyes on everything first, and then after seeing it all and taking it all in for maybe a couple minutes, I'll take a look at this wiring diagram. Different brands of different things, and then every brand has its own things that it did in different eras, and so. I can't say I've worked on a ton of 1990s train water source heat pumps, but I've worked on a lot of water source heat pumps. So take a couple minutes, familiarize myself with it. That way 
kind of know what's going on. So I'm gonna recommend they clean the EVAP, I recommend they check the strainer. Tell me what you guys think. What could be the cause of this issue? If there's something I'm overlooking, go ahead and drop a comment. If you think that I did a bad job diagnosing this system, go ahead, drop a comment. If you like HVAC videos, go ahead and subscribe because we'll just keep putting them out. Hey guys, it is Valentine's Day today. I am married to this trade. So happy Valentine's Day to all my brethren out there who are also married to this trade.